Well, today we're here to talk Husker football again with Sean Callahan, the publisher of HuskerOnline.com, as we have a Husker win to talk about as Nebraska was successful last week at home against Minnesota. Sean, thanks a lot for the time. Yeah, it's fun to finally talk about a win. I was beginning to think that us doing this each week began jinxing it because uh, it, it got it got to be pretty interesting the last several weeks uh, trying to figure out what we were going to say on these deals. And that's for sure. Let's look back at Saturday. That game really had a little bit of everything, but but in the end, the, the Huskers did enough things right to eventually pull away from the Gophers. Yeah, I, I think we finally all saw it come together, particularly with the offense uh, and the penalties. The lack of penalties was a big part of it. Um, I mean, a lot of games, every drive, Nebraska would get a 10- to 15-yard penalty. So that just adds that much more on top of maybe bad field position they were getting. And they didn't have great field position Saturday against Minnesota, uh, but they didn't have the penalties, and they were able to finish drives with touchdowns. And I thought that was a big part of it. Adrian Martinez going 25 of 29, two running backs over 100 yards on the ground on top of Martinez. It was the first time since the Washington game, Jason, in 2010, Nebraska's had three ball carriers go over 100 yards on the ground. So we saw it all clicking. The defense, you know, left some things out there. Um, this team still lacks a pass rush. Um, they still don't really have a big-time playmaker on the defense that can carry that unit. Um, but they played a collectively good game. They stopped the run, uh, but the, the pass defense definitely was an issue. And I think the lack of pass rush is as big of a factor as anything right now. But nonetheless, um, it was a good enough uh, performance to get it done by the defense and, and get that first win for Scott Frost. Let's talk about Adrian Martinez. Of course, there was a ton of hype about him coming in. But, boy, ever since the injury, I would have to say that this guy's been better than advertised. Oh, man, yeah. I don't think you could have drawn up a better true freshman year than what we're seeing. And really, for any freshman quarterbacks out there, I mean, this is as good as you're going to see. The completion percentage right now is almost 67%. And we're talking about a true freshman. And you compare that to guys like Tanner Lee, Tommy Armstrong, other quarterbacks at Nebraska, none of them were even in that uh, same stratosphere as what we're seeing from the completion percentage. So it, um, that's what jumps out to me. And you can't just take away one thing from him um, and expect the other not to be as good. He's equally as good of a runner as he is a thrower. And I think that's what impresses me on top of his maturity. Um, you know, he just doesn't act like a true freshman. He's more mature now than, you know, I, I could argue more mature on the field and even off the field than Tommy Armstrong was. And, and as far as just how he carries himself and the demeanor and the composure that he has on the football field, um, he just is a cool customer, which makes it even more unique. Was announced this week that a handful of other guys received black shirts. What do you think that kind of means for the defense? Well, they were waiting kind of for the right moment, getting a win. And here we are in almost November now, late October, and they finally got that first win. And it was the perfect time to, uh, to reward the rest of the starters. So Khalil and Carlos Davis got one today, as did Trey Neal and Lamar Jackson. Now, Ben Stilley was also given a black shirt. He chose not to take his black shirt this week, uh, kind of a statement that maybe um, he doesn't feel like he's played up to that level yet. But, um, yeah, I think it's just a, a statement like, you know what, these guys have done a lot of good work. They need to be rewarded for that. Um, they played really well the week before against Northwestern. I think if they would have beat Northwestern, the black shirts would have came out before the Minnesota game. But nonetheless, uh, they got a win and they handed them out here before Bethune-Cookman. Today we're joined by Sean Callahan, the publisher of HuskerOnline.com, as we preview the Nebraska matchup with Bethune-Cookman. Okay, Sean, the Huskers have a win now under their belt. Looking forward, what's kind of a realistic finish here for these guys to, to finish out the year? Well, I think there's five games left, and um, you have to. There's two that you have to kind of assume that you would think they could get for sure, and that's Illinois and Bethune Cookman. Um, I think Iowa and Minnesota, uh, Iowa, they're going to be underdogs in, but I still think that's a very winnable game um, if they play offensively like we've seen them play offensively. Um, I think the Michigan State game is a real wild card. It's at home. Uh, Northwestern beat Michigan State. Um, you know, I, 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 I think it's all 
how disciplined Nebraska plays, but that's a game they can win. I think the Ohio State game, even though the Buckeyes are just lost to Purdue, um, that might be a deal where Nebraska's going to get them at the wrong time. They're coming off a bye week and a loss. So the one break they did get, though, is that game in Columbus will be um, an 11 a.m. Central time kickoff, which that's the first time ever Nebraska's played Ohio State, and it hasn't been a night game. And let me tell you, that is not an easy place to play at night. Um, so that is a break for Nebraska. Uh, but, yeah, I think they could get three or four more wins of these final five games. I mean, that's not out of the question. Um, I feel pretty safe saying they can get to three, um, and you know, four to me is not out of the question. What are we going to see this week from Athune Cookman? Of course, this game was added late to, to make up for the game that didn't happen with Akron. Do they have any kind of material that could give Nebraska any kind of trouble? Well, if they were bringing their marching band, maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, unfortunately, their 300-person marching band that um, won like the best of the best band competition will not be traveling because that $800,000 check, uh, they don't want to blow a big chunk of that on taking the band. Um, as if you, we, we had a story on Husker Line, but Thune Cookman's in some major financial problems. So they need this money uh, for this game. Uh, but they're a team that will run a spread. They're 4-4 four and four on the year. Um, lower level, obviously. So this is a game where if Nebraska goes out and just takes care of business and executes, they should win by you know twenty eight to thirty five plus points. Um, you know, and, and that's what it needs to be. You want this to be another opportunity for Nebraska to go out on the field, get better, and take a step forward. All right, we'll see if it happens on Saturday. Sean, as always, thanks a lot for the time. Thanks, Jason. And that was Sean Callahan, the publisher of HuskerOnline.com. I'm Jason Jorgensen.